welcome back to the Wildlands. Today we're hunting pickles. We're in the centre of the food forest, under the shade, and growing up on this side of the trellis I have a bunch of pickling gherkins, and over there on the other side is eating cucumbers, that way I can't get them confused. And I've noticed that there are a few, they're getting rather large and they're ready to be cut and pickled, which I've never ever done before, so I'm going to show you how I get on. First thing I've done is pop my glove on because these pickles are covered in really brutal looking little spikes and so are their stems so you can't just pluck them and I'm going to snip them with my secateurs. Now some of them are easy to find and are enormous. Some of them require a little bit more hunting. There we go, look at that beauty. Uh, one up there, that'll do. Oh hello spider. Yeah, there's one hiding in here that I hadn't spotted earlier. There we go. There's a wonky looking one, but I don't think he's going to get any bigger. So we'll have him. This guy I'm going to leave because he'll probably get bigger. And they're covered in... There's a little baby one. They're covered in flowers. So we're going to get lots more. Uh, but that's, that's enough for today. I've just got too large, too small and a weenie and that's probably enough for one jar of pickles so that's all I want. The other ingredient I can pick straight from the garden is the dill. We've let this one go to flower because it's covered in hoverflies and you can still eat some of the leaves. It's almost past its best but not quite and this is the only dill of the hundreds I've planted in the garden that survived the voles and I guess it's because it's in our veg gar beds. So I'm just going to nip off. I don't need much it's just for the flavour of the pickles. Some of this. There we go. We're upstairs in the outdoor kitchen. I've got my kettle on to boil. I've got a pan at the ready and I've got all my ingredients. I'm going to go through step by step making our first ever dill pickles. Kettle's ready! First ingredient, three cups of water in the saucepan. And three quarters of a cup of white vinegar. I'm using white wine vinegar, three quarters of a cup, so that's a half a cup. Three tablespoons granulated sugar. One, two, three, and two tablespoons of salt. I'm using sea salt. Now I have to bring this to a boil over a medium high heat and then set it aside to cool, which is why I'm doing this bit first. Next is cutting the pickles. calls for two cloves of sliced up garlic and I'm using garlic that Rosie grew for us in the garden which is always a nice little touch. Oh goodness I thought that was one clove and it's lots of little ones. Final stage. I've sliced up my pickles. They look super duper cute. And they've got uh, coriander seeds and dill and sliced up garlic in there. So they're both ready to go. And I've heated up my brine until it boiled, turned it down to simmer for 15 minutes. Now I have to let it cool until it's just warm. Then I'll pour the brine into the jars, pop the lids on, and they go into the fridge. These aren't designed to store for months or years on your um, shelves. They're just designed to stay in the fridge for probably a, less than a day until they will get munched. But apparently they'll last up to a month in the fridge. So I'm quite happy with that. And I don't have to do any big water bath canning for these ones. Ta-da! 
I got a jar of pickles, I got a jar of pickles. Mm. So exciting. I will fill you in on how they taste in a couple of weeks time. We haven't actually done much preservation of anything before, short of chucking some green beans that you've just harvested into the freezer. But Dom bought me a dehydrator for Christmas and I've been testing it out, getting to grips with it. And I'm gonna show you what kind of things we can dehydrate in there today. Now down here in the food forest, on the very first berm, we have this lovely thyme plant. This I grew from seed last year. Um, this At the beginning of the year, it was about this big and now it's huge. I've already had a couple of harvests off of it. Um, so we're gonna take some more and I maybe could have had my secateurs, but if you take the young stems, then they're very tender and you can just yank them off. So we're gonna try dehydrating multiple things because it has multiple layers. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna go for thyme on a couple of layers. And then I'll take you over to the sage and the calendula. This beautiful sage bush is also only in its second year, having grown it from seed last year. And it has the most amazing, huge leaves. Oh, they smell fabulous. I try to do all my picking and harvesting first thing in the morning, partly because at the moment it's 30 degrees and it's only nine o'clock in the morning. It's gonna get a lot hotter later. Um, but partly because I've read that this is when the um, leaves or whatever else is that you're harvesting is at its freshest, just as the dew has dried. And I take a few from each different stem, just so I don't overwhelm the plant. And I'm leaving any that have little bug nibbles in. There's more than enough to go around here. Wow, look at the leaf there. Look at the size of that. Beautiful. That's probably enough. Maybe a couple more. And these are my calendula, also known as pot marigolds. The petals are edible, as are the little green things underneath. I tend to pick them and just take the petals off and sprinkle them into salads. I've read that you can also use them for all sorts of salves and medicinal um, uses. So I'm going to try picking the whole heads because apparently lots of the goodness is in this green bit and we'll try dehydrating them. I've never done this before. They're so beautiful. Happy little rays of sunshine. I've got some yellow ones as well, but that plant's not quite big enough to give me any flowers yet. Leave that one with a bug on it. Leave some for the bees and the uh, hoverflies and some for dehydrating. There we go. That'll do me for today. We're up here in the outdoor kitchen and I've got my dehydrator out and ready. I've got my herbs that we just picked in the garden. We're gonna layer these in here. There's a very clever little dehydrator because it has two different levels. It's got a wider gap for bigger things, which I thought is ideal for my big chunky flowers. Um, but if you want, just by flipping them over, it takes up a lot less space. So we're gonna take all the levels off down to the bottom. And I think first the flowers because they will take the longest to dry, I think. And I'm just going by a tutorial I saw online to put them upside down like this and leave the little green things. I must find out what that's called. I think it might be a calyx. Okie dokie. So then that's the first layer. And then sage leaves. And I've learned from experience that you have to pick the little stems off because they don't grind up very well. And I'm just putting them upside down in a little single layer. That's all of the sage and now I'm just going to layer the thyme on and I have two trays to put that on so I think it's all going to fit beautifully. I'm picking the slightly softer stems off of the woody stem and once these have dried we have to rub all of the little thyme leaves off of the stems and then we can keep them. So we fitted the whole lot in. Then you get to choose your temperature and your time. And at the moment, I'm just experimenting with these. I'm not entirely sure how long. So I tend to put things on very low. So your first option is 70 degrees C and you can go all the way down to 
35. So I'm going to put it on 40. And time 10 hours. I think I'll put it down to 5. So that's five hours at 40 degrees and then we'll see how well they've dried after that. The other thing you can do if they're um, drying out of sync with each other, especially as we've used three different types of um, herb, is you can take the trays out and relayer them, restack them without having to move each individual herb. This is quite a labour intensive process, obviously the picking and then the careful laying out in a single layer and after it's dried checking it, maybe restarting it and so on. But we have realised that we're spending one to two euros per little jar of herbs in the supermarket. We use a lot of herbs in our cooking. So for a little jar like this of our oregano, that's about two euros, maybe 250. And we get through one of these every two weeks or so. It just makes so much sense to be drying it from the garden. We use it fresh in our cooking now, but this is a pot of sage that I drew, grew myself and I dehydrated myself. I'll give you a little close up. And this will see us all through the winter, our very own dried herbs. Smells fab. And the trick is to make sure that they last well in their jars is just to make sure that they're absolutely 100% dry and crispy crispy. So I'll show you that once we get to that stage with these. night and we're so excited we do love a juicy burger don't we, we do like a burger beyond burgers no meat here and what would you like to have on your burger well, well I think I do like a nice tomato and a bit of a pickle bit of a pickle we'll get to the pickles in a minute show them the tomato grown in our garden look at that can you see how big that is it's let me enormous. come closer and do you a clenched fist look at the size of that baby it's huge that's it's the biggest big one we've had so far look at that <laughs> that's, that's a tomato isn't it they I call think, that a tomato i think it's actually bigger than the burgers it is yeah <laughs> so that'd be nice sliced down yeah that's a coração de boy portuguese um, variety of tomato very tasty and we're going to have pickles so you've seen me making them and it's a couple of weeks later and we're going to have a taste oh you smell good Sybil's come over for a pickle. No, you can't have any pickles. They're not for dogs. Ooh, there you go. Oh, You're going good, first. One try it. Mm. Yeah? It's a success. Oh, it's so good. Mmm, really crunchy. Really crunchy. Oh, really nice. Much nice better flavor. than the sort of pickled gherkin that you get in the shops. Mm. Really, um, I love it. Loving the garlic in it. So that was a super success. Now I know how to pickle my pickles. <laughs> you got a pickle pickle. Mmm. Burgers. Pickles. <laughs> There we have it, a little masterpiece. That tomato is absolutely epic and hanging out on all the sides. I'm gonna test it. <laughs> so epic burgers. They were so tasty. I really enjoyed the pickles, they were lovely, weren't All they? All down to the pickles, I was quite yeah. surprised, I must be honest. What, surprised that they were nice? Well, not surprised that they were nice, but they were so nice. Yeah. So yeah. definitely do them again, please. It's ruined us for supermarket pickles. Yeah, I don't want them no more. Crunchy in flavour, and I'm gonna mess around with the flavours next time, because that was just um, just three different flavours, but you could not have the garlic and you could put chilli peppers in there, or you could take out the coriander seeds and add dill seeds or whatever it might be, so. Well, I finished the pickles off last night and I actually enjoyed the dill. I put that in my burger and oh, it was yeah. really nice. Good idea, and the garlic. So yeah, it's a good recipe, I recommend it. And what about your dehydrating, how's that gone? It has gone really, really well. Um, everything in here is just completely crispy. So it ended up having two lots at five hours. So yep. it's just 10 hours at 40 degrees and everything is super duper crispy and it's ready to put, be put into jars. So again, I'm really, really pleased with how the dehydrators worked. We've got them all crispy. They ended up having 10 hours instead of five to get them really crispy, crunchy. And they are so, you can just crumble them into powder, which is exactly how you want them. And 
I'm really impressed with how the little calendula have dried. They look so pretty. They look still like little orange flowers. I'm just going to chuck them all in a jar here. And these ones I think I'm going to use for tea. So I'm going to keep on experimenting with what different things I can go in my dehydrator. And I've also been experimenting with chilli peppers. These are my dried chilies. Grew these from seed and they're now full of seeds. But these ones I just dried in the sunshine. I put them in a colander so you could get some air around them. I left them in the sun on the uh, during the heat wave in, on the table. And they took about two weeks and they're absolutely completely dry now. So we're going to try grinding these up in a food processor and turning them into chilli powder. So all in all, it's been very successful. So good start on food preservation. A lot more to do and to learn, but next year we're going gung-ho, aren't we? Yes. So in early news, those of you that watch us regularly will know that we redid our garden January, February of this year, putting our swales and berms in. And next year, or next season I should say, so in the autumn we're trebling the size of our garden and we're going to be opening a market garden. And part of that is we want to be preserving, drying, dehydrating and canning a lot more food, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we've had a fair amount of food to eat fresh out of the garden, um, but we've decided that the food forest is going to be more um, perennials. So anything that's just going to keep coming back year after year and it'll be less work. And then the market garden will be for your annual vegetables. Loads of peppers, loads of courgettes, loads of tomatoes, and then storing them so that we can feed ourselves through the winter. So we've been toying with the idea of trying to become entirely self-sustaining, haven't we? Toying with the idea. <laughs> toying with the <laughs> idea. So we're going to talk about that with you guys in another video at a later date. But for today, I think the dehydrator was a big success. It was, yeah. The gherkins were great in the burgers. The pickles were fantastic, definitely gonna do more of that. And I just want to give a quick shout out to John, who has been supporting us on Buy Me A Coffee for a long time now. And it was thanks to him, off of our wish list, that I have my beautiful kettle and all of the canning equipment that I used. So thanks very much, John, that's much appreciated. Thanks, John. So another week and another episode on the Wildlands. Thanks to everyone also for watching and for your likes and comments. And if you've got any questions about canning or preserving or dehydrating, do drop us a comment. Or if you're doing it yourself and you're ahead of us, if you've got any advice, pop that in the comments as well. Yeah, We'd I don't know to. how great I am at handing out the advice. No. I'm doing everything <laughs> for the first time well, it's myself. it's new to me, so yeah. I watched it and saw what you achieved, so I learned something. And I think if you thinking about canning or you think you'd like to but it's a bit big and scary it was big and scary for me too and i'm so surprised at how easy it was that brine you saw it come together in a matter yeah, of minutes super easy that and was super yeah. tasty as well mm. so those of you that are watching the cabin build we're on a little hiatus at the moment while we wait for our next event to provide us with the budget for the next part which is the cladding yes so there will be more cabin work coming up shortly and we're now out of the heat wave and getting towards autumn we also have nearly run out of water again, so might have to make a video for you giving you an update on our water situation. But all is good on the Wildlands, so a big thank you from us for your support for watching us, and we'll see you very soon with another video. Bye. Bye.